Hi, welcome to Coyote Exclusion and Deterrence, protecting the safety and security of your property, family, and pets. Brought to you by Huntsman Wildlife. You can find us everywhere online, huntsmanwildlife.com. I am your presenter, Ryan J. Ridgely. I am the owner of Huntsman Wildlife, LLC. We are an Ohio DNR licensed nuisance wildlife company. I've got 11 years of experience in the industry. Um, I am a member of the National Wildlife Control Operators Association. I have my certifications from Purdue University in urban pest management. I've been a prior license holder in the states of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, both North and South Dakota, Indiana, Kentucky, and Illinois. I do have extensive training through the University of Minnesota, University of Kansas, and the University of Kentucky. And I also have a bunch of other industry-specific qualifications and certifications that would just bore the heck out of you guys. The company that I own, Huntsman Wildlife, is, like I said, an Ohio DNR licensed wildlife company. We uh, focus on nuisance wildlife control, exclusion, and deterrence. We have a very, very strong focus on exclusion and prevention uh, because Huntsman Wildlife wants to be the leader in low mortality rate wildlife management. Meaning, I would much rather keep the animals out of your home and business than come and have to kill one. Huntsman Wildlife is a veteran-owned company. I did uh, serve some time with the United States military and the U.S. Army from 2001 until 2005. We're fully insured, fully bonded, and all that fun stuff. Enough about us. Let's talk about the Eastern Coyote, otherwise known as Canis Latrans. Um, I am a import to the Ohio region, so every now and then you might hear me refer to it as a coyote. Uh, but yes, we are going to be talking about the Eastern Coyote. Uh, physiology of the eastern coyote, they average about 30 to 40 pounds at adult weight. That being said, there are uh, some dogs that can come in somewhere in the 45, 50. It's been said to me, I haven't seen proof or any sort of research on it, but I have heard that there have been coyotes that have come in above 50. Average height is going to be around 30 inches, and they're going to be anywhere between 48 to 60 inches nose to tail. Uh, that being said, they are not as large of an animal as most people believe they are. Um, a lot of the times when a homeowner um, or resident is going to see a coyote, they are seeing that coyote when it is on alert. So its hackles are going to be raised, its fur is going to be raised, its tail is going to be up and poofy. Um, so the lack of, of true size um, and lack of reference point. A lot of people are staring strictly at the dog. They're not looking necessarily at the trees or um, any sort of identifying objects next to it to get a, a, a size off of it. Uh, coat wise, coats are often a mixture of grays, browns, reds, and the occasional black. Uh, this is where you'll see a lot of people will post online or make comments that uh, the Eastern Coyote looks a lot like the German Shepherd. Um, similar, absolutely, in coloring. Um, and then, of course, the pointed snout and the high, um, high alert ears. However, once you put a German Shepherd next to an Eastern Coyote, uh, you will see the absolute difference in size. Eastern Coyote habitat, um, mainly what they like are dense wooded areas. Uh, they will be seen in and around dairy and cropland. They are not a big fan of wide open spaces. They prefer seclusion of the dense wooded areas and shrubberies. Uh, and they are very well adapted to suburban and urban environments. With that, their dens can be a combination of hollowed out logs, rock outcroppings. Um, you know, they, they will on occasion for medium-sized to larger-sized land mammals uh, will take over dens, woodchucks, red fox, stuff like that. But they will also uh, create a den, if necessary, in culverts and sometimes even under decks and patios. 
Behavior-wise, the Eastern Coyote can live in packs up to six or a solitary lifestyle. Rarely will you see a pack more than six. We're going to go into a little further into the presentation, um, but when I refer to a pack, uh, we are also going to refer to that as a family unit because the coyotes mate for life. In addition to mating for life, the Eastern Coyote is extremely territorial and will use aggression uh, without prejudice to defend that territory and their young. Eastern coyotes are usually solitary hunters. That is unless, of course, they are hunting larger game. So again, if they are looking to take down a full-size adult white-tailed deer, uh, they will use multiple dogs during that hunt. They are predominantly nocturnal. Uh, that does not mean they are not active during the day. That will vary depending on human interaction and pup rearing. If there's a high amount of human activity uh, and they're feeling threatened, they will, of course, uh, do their best to avoid times that humans are around. So that's why they are mainly nocturnal. When Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner are asleep, the coyote knows this and will be more active during that time because Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner pose a threat to them. However, in the spring, late spring, early summer, when pups have a very high food consumption rate, both the male and female will be very active during the day, trying to get out, hunt, and find enough food to bring back to the den to feed the pups. Speaking of food, the Eastern Coyote diet, uh, they are opportunistic feeders and will shift their diet depending on available food sources, and resources. Uh, mainly what they're, they're big fans of are small rodents such as mice, squirrels, rats, uh, voles, um, but they do consume a decent amount of fruits. Uh, some deer, a uh, majority of the deer consumption within a pack is often going to be fawns or uh, the carcasses of a dead animal, say a hunter, uh, takes a deer but is not able to recover the body or again, um, a deer is hit by a vehicle or for whatever reason dies, the coyotes will come and they will consume that carcass. Um, they will also take smaller animals like rabbits, woodchucks, stuff like that. And on occasion, very rare occasion, when limited resources in a highly urban environment, small pets will be consumed. We're gonna go over some common myths right now regarding coyotes. First one that I hear all the time is, oh, well, 20% of a coyote's diet is cats. Though the Eastern coyote is an opportunistic hunter, um, the Urban Coyote Research Program out of Illinois, or Illinois performed a study back in 2017 of 1,400 fecal samples. Of those, less than 2% of the DNA in those samples showed feline DNA, and there was zero evidence of canine DNA or uh, dog pets. Coyotes will take feral cats and on the occasion domestic cats that are left outdoors. Um, there's certainly evidence that coyotes that are habituated to humans and the environment and are overly bold and extremely aggressive will go after small dogs. However, your family pets are not their primary prey. Um, one, one way I want to make an example of this are, are coyotes uh, look at food as a resource and want to find the quickest and easiest way to get that resource with the least amount of energy spent. I use the example, if I am out and about during my day and uh, it's you know noon, one o'clock and I'm getting hungry, I'm not going to go to the grocery store and grab a pound of ground beef and some seasonings and some buns and some cheese and some onions, take that all back to my office, form up the patties, put them on the grill, grill them up and have myself burgers for lunch. Nope, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the drive-thru, 
order a number two with a Diet Coke, and I have my meal. Coyotes are the exact same way. If there is enough of a food source, they're not going to go after your animals. There's just no need for it. They will go after animals, your pets, your dogs, your cats, again, if resources are limited or if they feel threatened and need to defend their territory. Myth number two, coyotes will attack small children. One thing I constantly am trying to hit home is that coyotes are wild animals and apex predators are apex predators. Of course, if they feel threatened, if they feel like they're in danger or their young are in danger or their territory is in danger, they will protect themselves and their offspring. However, combined in the United States and Canada, there have only been 367 attacks on human beings from 1977 to 2016. Of those attacks, 168 of them were in California, and I can say with very good certainty that a majority of those interactions were people who were infringing on the coyotes' territory, and it wasn't out of aggression. I am a very large person. I'm six feet tall, and as of the date of this recording, I'm 255 pounds. Nobody's calling me tiny anytime soon. However, if I go into a room and Andre the Giant is in that room, I am not going to pick a fight with Andre the Giant. Same thing with coyotes. Coyote comes across a human being. They're not going to pick a fight unless they feel threatened. According to the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, as the time of this recording, there has been no known verified attack that has occurred by a healthy coyote on a human being. I know everyone's got the story about their mothers, cousins, uncles, co-workers, niece that was out playing in the yard and got bit by a coyote. Again, what this research is saying is that there is no known verified attack that has occurred by a healthy coyote on a human being. Myth number three, the only way to control coyotes is trapping and killing. Coyotes are territorial, and with that extreme territorial nature, uh, they are really adamant about keeping other coyotes out of their home range. The larger territory that a pack has, the fewer dogs are going to be present in that area. Um, removing the, the native coyotes from that area will open up that region for new coyotes to come in and claim it as their own. There will always be more coyotes coming in to fill in a territory. So even if we take a dozen hunters out into the fields and, and the woods and try and call the entire population, the short-term decrease in the number of coyotes will quickly increase as the territory lines are redrawn by new newcomers. When there's less pressure from neighboring coyotes and more food is av available, and we go and call those, those packs or that area of, of coyotes, it's been shown that actually female coyotes will have larger litter of pups, creating that short-term increase to get the numbers back in an area or back to the level that, that nature determines that area can hold. And that's one thing that I always want to stress is that an ecosystem can only support the number of coyotes that an ecosystem can support. I know it sounds contrived and it sounds too simple, but that's really what it is. If an ecosystem that is 10 square miles can support five dogs, then there will never be more than five dogs in that area. That's just the way that, that nature is designed. It. So there is no way that your neighborhood or city can have an overpopulation in coyotes. It's never overpopulated. It's never infested. Uh, 
Um, if a city does want to limit or reduce the number of coyotes, honestly, the easiest thing to do is to allow the existing dogs to work out their territories and naturally stabilize the population. Myth number five, a coyote out in the daytime is either sick or dangerous. Again, like I said in a previous slide when we were talking about diet um, and pup rearing, um, there are times in the year where uh, the eastern coyote is going to seem like it is more active or more visible. Uh, it's perfectly normal for a coyote to be out during the day. Uh, 200 years ago, when, when they were running through this area and there were very fewer human beings, uh, the coyotes were active during the day. Uh, they made a behavioral change um, during that time to a more nocturnal existence in order to avoid human beings. You know, being active at dawn and at dusk um, and, and during the evening helps them prevent interacting with human beings, which are their, their, the only predator out there for a coyote in this region. Again, like I've said before, in the spring and summer, when they're raising the pups, um, there is an increased need for food, and so they may be more active during the day and spotted more often. Um, and commonly, I, we get calls all the time from residents, you know, misinterpreting, uh, you know, frequent daytime sightings as a rise in population or that the dog is sick or might be injured, um, most of which are, are, are never or not never, I won't, I won't speak in, you know, absolutes, but rarely um, just because you see a coyote during the day um, or active, you know, midday or whatever, does that mean that, that that animal is sick or injured? So what can you do? You know, obviously I, I've, I've hit home the fact that coyotes are going to be here. Uh, there's not much we can do when it comes to trapping um, and, and using lethal uh, control measures to actually, you know, achieve long-term results for controlling a coyote population. So, so how do we exist and keep our, our family and our pets and our property safe? Well, the first and foremost is protecting your property. Easiest way to do that is exclusion and deterrent tactics. Six foot fences with coyote rollers, um, specific lighting, motion activated sprinklers, containing your waste, clearing brush and overgrowth. We're gonna go over those now. Fencing wise, uh, when it comes to protecting your children and your pets, keeping them contained inside a fence is going to be your best protection against the Eastern Coyote. At minimum, that fence should be six feet high. You want chain link, panel, privacy fence, absolutely. And installing coyote rollers on top of the fence to prevent the climbing is going to be the absolute best option. I'll have a link below in the video description uh, for coyote rollers. Um, and we'll be doing a video, a future video on how exactly they work um, and where you can purchase and what we recommend for uh, purchase options. Lighting wise, like I said, coyotes are nocturnal by nature um, due to the changes in their uh, habits due to humans, and they prefer not to be exposed. They don't want to be seen with us or seen by us. So a well-lit backyard with sufficient light coverage is going to help keep them out, off of your property and out of the areas that you don't want them in. I recommend LED floodlights with long-range motion, se motion sensors. Uh, they're the most economical option. I know there are some companies online. Um, you can purchase specific strobe lights um, and hazing lights that are supposed to be motion activated. I haven't seen um, any solid data that they're as effective as um, high lumen LED floodlights lighting up your backyard. Uh, the motion activated sprinklers, they are advertised online as a way for coyote control. Uh, in this region of the United States, because we do freeze in the winter, 
They're not a great option in the winter months, um, but they can be very effective. Um, they're also going to do great at keeping the deer, raccoons, skunks, and birds out of the garden as an added bonus. I will say they're not 100% effective. Um, unless you've never seen a coyote out in the rain um, or getting wet, just because they're getting wet doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to go away. Uh, what the motion activated sprinklers do is it startles them, it alarms them, and it hopefully sends them on the way. Over time, I'm going to assume that they're just going to get used to the fact that if they're on this property, they're going to get wet. So I don't see them as a, a great long-term solution, but I do see it as a uh, fantastic short-term solution, and it will work well um, having them out there to keep your garden safe from other uh, nuisance wildlife animals. Also, you want to make sure that you are keeping your waste and your garbage contained. Uh, not because the coyotes are necessarily going to go after your trash. Uh, that's a common misconception that coyotes go into trash cans. Uh, they will go into a trash can that's been knocked over by, say, a raccoon or a possum, something else. Um, but the reason we want to keep your, your waste contained and your trash containers contained is that is going to limit the food source for the animals that are the food source for the coyotes. So if you keep your trash contained and, and secured, then the raccoons and the rats and uh, the squirrels and the possums can't get into that trash. And then them consistently getting into your trash, see that as a food source. So they're going to move in property and make it super easy that they sleep in, you know, the hollowed out tree on the back of your property and not during the day. Then at night they come and eat your trash. Well, that's going to attract the coyote and we'll just avoid that all by making sure that your trash is not accessible to other wildlife. And lastly, clearing overgrowth and brush. Um, again, like I said, coyotes prefer to be in cover and they're going to uh, try their best to stay out of open areas for a long period of time. Clearing brush and overgrowth, so you have some sort of natural buffer between the wood line or uh, the tree line and your yard uh, is a great way to exclude coyotes from your area. For instance, in my property, I have a, around a 60 to 70 foot buffer uh, between the tree line on our farm um, and the fenced in areas that we let our dogs out. So speaking of dogs, let's talk about how to protect your family and your pets from the Eastern Coyote. First and foremost, I want to just make sure uh, that everyone is clear, never allow children or pets to interact or approach any wild animal. Um, if you let a child or a pet uh, close to an animal, be it injured, be it alive, be it dead, whatever, um, they soon learn that they can approach those animals in the future. And so uh, if there is a coyote pup or a possum or a baby raccoon um, and you let your dogs near it, then your dog's going to associate that smell and that animal with, oh, I'm, I'm safe, I can approach it again. And so they're going to approach an adult animal in the same nature, and I can promise you it's not going to go well. Second, do not leave food out overnight for pets. I know this is hard for a lot of people because they do have outdoor animals, and I want to make sure they're well fed. I myself have barn cats in the three barns that we have on our farm, and I want to make sure that they're properly fed. But with that, every night when I close up my chicken coop, I also put away the food. My barn cats know that in the morning when I open up the chicken food, they soon get fed afterwards. And at night when the chicken coop gets closed, the food gets put up. So they have anywhere between a 10 to 12 hour window to get their food. That's something um, that, again, um, you just need to realize that if the food source is out for other animals, then that is going to attract coyotes to the area because they are going to see those other animals as a food source for them. I highly doubt that the coyotes are going to be very interested in the uh, cat food that I put out for our, our barn cats, but I can guarantee you if the coyotes learn that we have three barn cats that are running around and food gets tight and there are no rabbits and no squirrels and no you know little tiny rodents running around the woods for them to eat, then absolutely, they're going to come and they're going to try and get to my barn cats. So I avoid that temptation 
by making sure that the cats are not around food and an accessible area for them. Uh, do not walk through tall grass fields and woods with a dog off leash in the spring and early summer. I know a lot of people like to go for walks and hikes with their dogs in the woods. I do not recommend it uh, with them off leash just because in the spring and summer, um, you know, like I said, the Eastern Coyote is going to be raising its pups and it is very difficult. Coyotes are really good at creating dens where you can't see them. However, the olfactory senses, the nose on your dogs are going to be able to pick up that den and your dog is going to approach that den, which is going to cause an altercation between the coyote and your dog. You can avoid that by keeping your dog on a leash during the spring and summer when you're going through walks in the woods. If you are confronted by a coyote out in the woods or out on your property, easiest way to handle that is to make yourself big, raise your arms, wave them around, yell, um, shout, but do not turn your back and run. Stand your ground, make yourself big, and make a lot of noise, and a healthy coyote will turn and go the other way. Again, I go back to my Andre the Giant analogy. Coyote is not going to want to take you down because that's just too much of a fight for very little reward. Um, and lastly, please, 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 unattended pups are never truly unattended. Um, the mother is near, the father is near, trust me on this, trust me on this, trust me on this. If you happen to come across, you know, a couple pups sitting in the grass near your property, leave them be. Uh, in the spring and summer, you do not want to get anywhere near those pups because like I said, uh, both the mother and father coyote are extremely, extremely and aggressively defensive of, of their, their offspring. So all that being said, um, if that animal, when when you do interact with an animal uh, or an eastern coyote and it shows no fear um, and continues to show aggression, safely and immediately leave the area, contact a wildlife professional or law enforcement. Um, that also applies to if an animal is acting abnormally um, or visually looks ill or, uh, and most importantly, if a coyote has come in contact with a pet or a child and has inflicted damage or injuries, um, a wildlife professional or law enforcement or medical personnel need to be contacted. Um, please, 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 if medical attention is necessary, please contact um, 911 and get emergency services out there. Um, wildlife professionals are not trained medical personnel. We are not veterinary staff. Uh, so if there is uh, any sort of injuries, please make sure to seek medical attention before contacting a wildlife professional. And of course, when in doubt, um, err on the side of caution and reach out to a wildlife professional such as myself or law enforcement um, and, and exercise your options there. Ohio Revised Code 1531.40 states nuisance wild animal means any wild animal that interferes with the use or enjoyment of property, is causing a threat to public safety, or may cause damage or harm to a structure, property, or person. When that is the case, and it is the last resort, if a coyote has become so bold that it begins targeting pets as prey or biting people. And that dog's behavior is beyond being resolved by hazing, exclusion, or deterrent techniques, then lethal removal is the only solution left. This typically means trapping in either a leg hold, snare, or a live catch situation, and then a lethal end for that animal. Relocation is not an option. The Ohio Revised Code does not allow for it, um, but it's because it doesn't fix the problem behavior. And that actually puts the dog in danger of being hit by a car as it tries to return back into its own territory, or being injured in fights with other resident 
coyote is of the territory it's been delivered to or passes through. Mainly what you're doing is you're taking an already known aggressive and dangerous animal, putting it in a situation where that aggression is going to be heightened because it's not familiar and it's not comfortable. Um, and so you're going to be putting others um, and other pets and other people in danger. So that is why the state of Ohio uh, declares that any coyote that is trapped cannot be relocated. It does uh, need to be uh, lethally ended at that point. Targeted removal of a specific animal is very different uh, than the indiscriminate removal or uh, some would call it culling or thinning of the pack um, of any and all coyotes. I want you to, to remember that. Uh, Huntsman Wildlife is not at all uh, against the targeted removal of specific problem animals. Uh, we are adamant against the uh, indiscriminate uh, widespread lethal methods of control for coyotes because uh, science and the research has shown that it is just not a valid option. We need to learn that uh, coyotes are going to be in our environment and how to interact with them safely. Um, and that's where I'm hoping this presentation on some deterrent and exclusion methods uh, for your home and your yard will help keep you your pets and your family safe and help keep the coyotes off the portions of your property and out of the portions of the property that you do not want them in. Normally during the presentation, uh, this is where I would open it up to a question and answer session, but because this is a recorded video, there is not a likelihood that any questions you ask out loud right now am I going to hear. So instead, what I'm going to give you an option for is this contact form. You can contact us either through email, through text message, or phone call, um, through our website, or through Facebook and Instagram. If you have any questions, if you have any clarification needs, or um, need some assistance, or want us to come out and help you determine some um, exclusion and deterrent options for your home or your property, please do not hesitate to reach out to us in one of the ways below. I want to thank you all for sitting through this presentation. Hopefully it was informative and gave you uh, enough information to make some decisions on how you and your family or you and your business are going to deal with the coyote population in your area. If you are in the Cincinnati area and you want uh, this presentation live for either your homeowners association, your neighborhood group, or your community, uh, do not hesitate to reach out to us. We are more than happy to give this presentation live. And again, uh, that will allow for a Q&A session afterwards for any residents or attendees to ask their questions then. Until next time, you guys be careful, be safe. And again, if you have any sort of nuisance wildlife control, exclusion, or deterrent needs, please do not hesitate to reach out to us any of these ways.